Has anyone ever challenged you to something you are an expert at without them knowing it? If so, how did it turn out for them slash you? Not me, but I remember a story of a kid whose dad was remodeling their garage and he was going over the drawing with the inspector who had a chip on his shoulder and was saying that the designs wouldn't work. The dad was disagreeing, saying that it would, going back and forth. The dad then asks if he would improve it if he had a PE sign off on it. The inspector agrees, and the dad goes inside, gets his PE stamp, and stamps the drawing. In the Marine Corps, they do a lot of wrestling slash grappling as training and exercise. Well, for a Marine, I was a pretty unimposing looking person. Little did they know that I had been doing jujitsu, a form of grappling, for about four or five years before joining. So more than a few times I would have these big weightlifter meathead types challenge me to grappling only for me to wipe the floor with them. It kind of became a joke once people caught on, and when we would get new guys to the unit, the guys in the know would trick them into grappling against me. I was pretty good at Gears of War. Gears of War 2 comes out, and a kid at school was having a tourney at his house the weekend after the game released, and my buddy invited me over. The kid was talking so much crap the whole time, but mostly to me, guess he didn't like me. I finally have had enough and said the typical, 1v1 me bro, and we get into it. Execution mode on River, my best map. I was asked to leave his house by his dad after I won because I made his 16-year-old rage and put a hole in their wall. Edit. Holy fat balls. I sleep, go to work, and come home to see that this thread and my comment blew the F up. I just come back from the UltraZone Laser Tag National Championships when my office announced that we were having a Laser Tag team building event. The 90s were a beautiful time. I'm just waiting for that day someone challenges me to take the derivative of a function. I occasionally encounter anti-nuclear folks to try to converse with me about how nuclear energy is the worst thing that has ever happened to the world. What they don't know is that I have a master's degree in nuclear engineering. When I tell them, and then tell them that coal power releases more radiation into the atmosphere than nuclear, they tell me that I am biased and walk away. Edit. Well, this basically turned into an AMA. I will answer you guys' questions, but I am at work right now, so don't expect immediate answers. Nerd moment. Someone once challenged my general knowledge of Batman, and they were sorely mistaken. I was at training in Arizona a few years ago for people in a bunch of different industries. One guy was the head of quality for a particular and well-known winery in California. We all go out to dinner, and this guy orders a fairly expensive glass of wine from his winery at a restaurant. They brought over the wine, and when he sipped it, he let the waitress know that this was not the wine he ordered. She assured him it was and brought him another glass. Again, he insisted it was not the right wine. Finally, the manager came over, and our guy revealed himself as head of quality for the winery. The manager stumbled, trying to make up a poor reason, and admitted they ran out and figured they would replace it with a very similar, and as it turns out, much cheaper, wine. The look of smug satisfaction on our guy's face was priceless. Mario Kart 64. This was back in college and I didn't actually realize how good I was. I'd spent countless hours in that game just messing around in all the levels, finding the silly little tricks you can do to shave off time, practicing my banana peel aim, and perfecting the art of the upside down question mark. Some guys in my dorm challenged me and I was like, sure. Wiped the floor. I was flabbergasted. They've been trash-talking myself and each other, and at the end of the whole thing, they just stared at me like I was a monster before breaking out into, holy crap! So they commenced in inviting their champ over to teach me a lesson. I just idly chatted the whole time while I lapped the guy on Rainbow Road, to his and everyone else's dismay. I don't even know, most useless mastery ever? Edit, spelling corrections, thanks swipe, and obligatory this is my highest voted post, incredulity. Not challenged per se, but I had a guy start speaking German to me in Australia once, so I answered him in kind. I was working in a ticket booth at the time, and I assumed he was either trying to make me look dumb, impress me, or impress his friends. My German isn't great, but I have enough that I could reply to him. His friends laughed. It felt good. I once had a guy at a party try to lecture me about a particular topic. He quoted a paper about the topic and tried to explain it to me. I told him he was interpreting the sentence wrong and he started belittling me for being too stupid to understand the topic, including calling other people over to witness my embarrassment. I stopped him and asked him who wrote the paper he was quoting. He didn't know, so I made him look it up on his phone. Turns out, to his great embarrassment, he was quoting me to me and was trying to explain to me what I meant in my own paper. I let him try to stammer his way out for a few minutes, then gave him my card and told him that he could call me if he ever wanted to fix his ignorance. 
Edit. Many people asking for the topic. Unfortunately, telling you that would mean revealing my true name. To give you an idea, it was a technical topic similar to the Heartbleed thing. Media wrote about it, got it wrong, I wrote a rebuttal paper. Got shared around the community and became sort of the go-to paper explaining the subject. At a barbecue last summer, my friend's nieces, kind of bratty little things, were playing on the trampoline. They were doing front flips and things. They challenged me to do what they were doing. Little did they know that I had 15 years of gymnastics and 6 years of trampolining history. I launched in with a straight double back somersault that simultaneously impressed them and reminded me of the value of a good warm up. I was at a software engineering conference in January and a colleague saw my terminal with pink text running Vim, a text editor for Unix systems, and said, I bet you can't even exit out of that thing. Background, Vim is a tool that has a notoriously steep learning curve for beginners. I'm a woman doing a computer science degree and I always make a point of not hiding, toning down my love of doing hair, makeup, and dressing up. So I'm used to the shock I get when I tell people I'm a CS. It's not always their fault. Stereotypes exist. Some people are just bigger D's about it than others and assume I have no clue what I'm doing. Anyway, the look on his face when I showed him what I knew was priceless. After many large projects using Vim as your sole editor, you learn a few many things. Also, in before Emacs. Unfortunately, yes, it never turns out well because I make vaccines for a living. People posting on Facebook, new parents discussing why they don't want to vaccinate their newborns, friends and relatives talking about the latest sensationalist story they heard on why Big Pharma is a terrible, evil conspiracy. I've been in the industry for six years now, have an education in chemical engineering. I've worked with live infectious diseases, primarily pertussis and polio, been part of the manufacturing process from growing the bacteria, inactivation, lysing, purification, vial filling, start to finish. I know how they work, what the history of how they used to be made is, how seriously pharma companies take adverse events, and I know firsthand how dangerous these diseases can be. But it doesn't matter because that picture that someone shared on Facebook with a sad story about their child dying obviously knows more than me. Even when I try to explain how it actually works, their eyes glaze over and nothing gets through. It's really frustrating having all the answers to every one of their concerns and not being able to reassure them because they're too stupid to understand basic biology. Someone tried to challenge my knowledge of country locations. They had no idea that I can name and place every country on Earth without any mistakes. He tried to insist that he of course knew Eastern Europe country locations better than me because he was European. Belittling me was only working to my advantage when I made him look it up and he looked like that much more of an idiot. Not a challenge per se, but I'm a cricketer and when I went to the new club I told everyone I was a fast bowler. I don't look the part though, 5'8 and on the chubby side. Usually fast bowlers are lean and well over 6 feet. So naturally everyone thought I was going to be a waste of time. Not only that, they all let me know that I should try out as a batsman or a spinner to improve my chances. The premier bowler in that club could bowl at speeds up to 135 kilometers per hour on a good day. My first ball after a short warm-up clocked in at 132 kilometers per hour. No one has dared made a joke about my height and body shape again. My dad is pretty much a pool pro and this guy challenged him to a game talking hot crap. Well, my dad didn't miss one shot and when he sunk all the solids he started shooting the guy's stripes. TLDR, my dad is so B.A. he goes balls deep with the other guy's balls. I'm the boss owner at my company and mostly just work in the office. Every year we have an Xmas party in the workshop with all of our rough, tough outside workers, lots of beer, etc. One year my partner hired a pool table and all the guys who played in the bars every weekend were surprised that I whooped their butts. Next year it was a ping pong table. Same thing. The third year, a table soccer game. If we ever bring in a pinball game, I'll have the quadrilla. P.S. I wasted my youth. Back in my school's anime club, we had this kid, I think the term is weeaboo, who wouldn't stop bragging about how good his Japanese is, and how the rest of us should call him sensei. Apparently he had been taking Japanese since middle school. I was actually raised in Japan. Turns out all he could do was elementary level Japanese, couldn't even understand a single bit of colloquial Japanese or write more than a few basic sentences. I play Star Wars CCG, collectible card game, competitively. Yeah, I know, it's been out of print for like 14 years now, but we still have an active community. A few years back I was playing a pickup game online against a random guy. 
He was playing a pretty traditional deck, and I was playing a deck that at the time looked absolutely terrible on paper, but worked beautifully. The matchup was especially bad for him, and I'm a pretty strong player. As soon as I saw what he was playing, I knew I was going to win and informed him of this. And I totally destroyed him. He kind of goes on tilt and he's talking crap about my deck. Let's play again. No way will I lose to that pile of trash two games in a row. I shrug my shoulders and win handily again. He still insists that my deck is terrible. Then I inform him, this deck just got second at Worlds a couple months ago. Trust me, it's pretty good. Yeah, well, who played it? That deck looks terrible. I did. Someone told me to go F myself. Idiot didn't know I was practicing for that for years. I'm no expert, but I've logged way too many hours of Super Smash Bros. on N64. Somehow at parties, we end up bringing out the N64. I play really well, and guys aren't a fan of a girl winning with a pink Samus. I bought a house and had a guy offer us a $20 Lowe's card to give us an in-home demonstration of water filtration technology. He came in and set up and started his spiel. He asked me what I do for a living, and I replied that I am a chemist at a water treatment plant. He stopped for a second and said, you probably know more about this stuff than I do. He then asked to talk with my wife, who refused. He packed up and left without continuing the demo. Never got my $20 Lowe's card. I went to see a Jupiter Ascending at the cinema last month, and the projection was slightly out of focus all the way through despite complaints. I spoke to the manager at the end to see if I could score some free tickets, citing a poor customer experience, but he explained very condescendingly that this film was shot with a new type of camera, and it was supposed to look like it did. I listened patiently, then explained I had spent six months as the first assistant cameraman on that film, and that what he said sounded a lot like nonsense. Got free tickets. In college, I ended up walking into a party while a guy was ranting about Americans being self-absorbed and rarely bothering to go abroad or otherwise pay attention to other countries. I entered the room and he said, for instance, and turned to me. When was the last time you or any of your relatives were in a country other than the United States? I blinked at him and went, well, I'm Canadian. Everyone else burst into laughter. I used to be in the England badminton squad when I was younger, like 10 to 12, and played country from 12 to 14, but then gave it up to play rugby. We had a new PE teacher who liked to get involved and join in, and he seemed to think that he was very good at badminton. And he fronted the after-school club, which I didn't go to. He offered a game to everyone in the class and said if someone got within five points of him, scoring goes first to 21 points wins, he would give them 20 pounds. I was nominated by the rest of the class, and I ended up winning 21-7 to despite him being about 25 years old and a pretty decent player. Needless to say, he was pretty embarrassed. Original Halo. Used to work in a school, few kids were talking trash. Long story short, we grabbed two Xboxes, after school, hooked them up. Three on two quickly turned into a 1v4 massacre of epic proportions. 50-2 to two or three. Kids think they old school. They saw me nadin', they hatin', pistolin', mother effers, ridin' dirty. A co-worker wrote a short medley on his whiteboard and challenged anyone to name that tune. I have a music degree and excellent in sight reading. I sang it out loud first time through and told him the name, Ride of the Valkyries. Best response was the guy next to me who then said, You can read music? In college, a co-worker of mine hosted a hearts tournament. Buy-in was like 10 bucks, and the top person from each of the eight tables were matched up to play each other in two games, and then the top two of those played in the championship game. I asked to join in since he needed people to fill the tables. Do you even know how to play? It won't be like playing on the computer, you know. I think I can manage. Okay, I can give you some pointers if you like. I'm pretty good. I learned how to play hearts at four, and it's something my family did throughout my childhood. I've always been able to count cards, I guess you would say, and keep track of everything that has been played. I won the championship round with a score of seven. For those of you who don't know, it's like golf. When a player crosses 100 points, the player with the lowest score wins. The person with 118, Mr. Let me know if you need any help. That $320 helped pay my rent. Thanks, dude. Not exactly on topic because they know it, but I am really fast at doing math in my head, adding, subtracting, multiplication, and division. My kids like to play dad versus the calculator. They give me an equation and I can usually give them the answer without using paper and pencil before they can get the answer using a calculator. On St. Patrick's Day three years ago, some guys challenged me to Irish step dance off. 
What this guy didn't realize was that he decided to start a dance-off against a world champion Irish dancer. I had all my drinks paid for after that. Not exactly expert, but I am bilingual. I come from the US but moved to Poland when I was about 6 years old, am now 23. However, I don't have an unusual accent in either language. I sound like a normal American when I speak English, and I sound like a normal Pole when I speak Polish. I've had multiple situations where I've corrected someone's English, they challenge me, then realize I'm a native speaker. Whoops. Also, funny to hear people talking about me in other languages, English speakers when I'm in Poland, Polish speakers in the UK, US. Often being rude, assuming I don't understand. Just a simple, is that so, or some small phrase, and people go all red. I was in my mid-40s at the time. My son's babysitter, who was on the high school track team, challenged me to a foot race, 200 yards or so. Big mistake. I don't know why I have never run competitively or trained in any way, but I can run. I'm 64 now and have 8 kids, none of whom has ever beaten me in a foot race. They still occasionally try. I sort of did that. I was jokingly challenging my philosophy teacher with a one meter ruler, sort of like a sword. He grabbed a pointer and completely disarmed me. Apparently when he was at Oxford he had done fencing and for quite a while after that. Stupid Big Bang Theory means everyone thinks they're physicists. I have a degree in chemistry, including three years of quantum mechanics modules, from a leading uni, but I work in finance, so most people just assume I have finance-related education. One guy I went out with on the first day started explaining to me about cats and boxes in the most condescending tone of voice. I wouldn't have cared if hadn't spoken to me like I was an idiot. I pulled out a pen and on a napkin wrote the equation and started talking about the concept of wave-particle duality and then asked what he knew about the double slit experiment. I didn't get a second date, but the people on the next table laughed. I was at the annual Mud Fest in Korea. They had mud wrestling, however the sexual connotation of the act must have been lost in translation. It consisted of 130 to 150 pound Korean men wrestling each other, almost like sumo. First person to fall on the ground or fall out of the 10 foot diameter inflatable tub was out. There was a huge line of like 75 to 100 individuals lined up to wrestle and show off to their friends. Winner stays. I have wrestled for many years, competed in judo, and have been doing BJJ for seven years at that time. I walk up and they start yelling, American, American, chanting me in. I was demolishing kids. Like three to five seconds, I had these guys on the ground or out of the ring. I was probably 165 pounds, not overly big. Soon they started asking if they could add more, first two, then three. Eventually I was wrestling five people at once. I finally got tired after a good 12 to 15 minutes fighting off multiple individuals. Plot twist? My real secret was that I put on water socks and no one noticed in the murky mud water and it gave me superior grip compared to their naked feet on slippery plastic. When I was like 16, my friends and I had a lightsaber battle after a couple of feet of snow had fallen. Now, my brother and I fought with those things constantly, for years. In the yard, on the trampoline, in the barn loft, wherever. Well, during the Battle of Hoth, there were snowballs in play as well. I guess I got too into it and was used to fighting my brother, who was more practiced than my friends. I was running towards a guy, he hurls a snowball, I come up with the lightsaber and hit the snowball, then come back down and hit him right near the collarbone. I was told to stop playing so hard. Sorry, can't turn this Jedi swagger off. In high school, many kids would challenge me to Magic the Gathering because they saw me play it at lunch. Little did they know I was a Pro Tour qualifier grinder and a Grand Prix player. I have a pretty good one. I was sick with a Streptococcus throat infection. I've had them chronically since I was a child, when I was attending college, and the nurse gave me a really hard time about getting antibiotics when I went to the on-campus clinic. She kept going on about how students don't realize that a cold won't be fixed with antibiotics and generally being a jerk about it. So the doctor comes in, looks in my throat for about one second and says, yep, it's strep. We'll get you some antibiotics. By the way, what do you study here? I look at the nurse in the corner, beginning to fume from the doctor's answer, smile, and reply, microbiology. This is backwards. I accidentally challenged someone. I was talking to a couple of guys at a party, and at some point the conversation turned to those pain games kids drunk guys play. Like punching each other in the fists until someone gives up, 
So I feel pretty confident because I have a high pain tolerance and everyone says the guy I'm talking to is the most boring guy ever and never does anything rash, stupid, or interesting. Twenty or so incredibly painful punches in, I'm starting to think maybe he knows something I don't because he shows no signs of discomfort, let alone the excruciating pain that I'm feeling. He's just smiling at me. We stop talking entirely and the game escalates. Finally, I've lost count and I can't take it anymore. I curl up over my swollen purple hand and say something like, what the F? He starts laughing and explains. He has nerve damage in his fists from injuries sustained playing this game as a kid. He can't feel anything in the area around his knuckles or in the back of either hand. No one, except me being a dumb butt, has challenged him in years because everyone knows he can play forever without any pain whatsoever. Last week I was going to go upstairs to brush my teeth. Well, lo and behold, out of nowhere my daughter gets all cocky and challenges me to a race up the stairs. Now, she's six and in shape, but I've been running upstairs my whole damn life. So we line up and go charging up the stairs? Well, she won. I had to let her win, like every time. Not me, but on a rugby forum I frequent. A few years ago, there was a discussion about scrum techniques, and a couple of members were discussing it quite heatedly on a thread. Nobody else was really joining in, as most of them knew that one of the participants was a former international forward with over 60 caps. Eventually, somebody told the other bloke who he was arguing with. He disappeared and was never seen again. I worked at a circuit city installing car stereos and alarms, etc. This was back in 2001. I obviously didn't have much money. A coworker who had just moved from sales to install was giving me crap about my cheap stereo and explaining how his 412s were the crap. Typical rich kid with more money than cents. Every time I saw the guy, he gave me crap about my two cheap 10s. Every effing time. I just let him go and go, making a butt of himself. Then I taped a copy of Performance Auto Sound Magazine to his shiny new toolbox, open to the page with the results from IASCA's World Finals. I came in fourth in my class. Oddly, I could never get him to go to any competitions with me. I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I grew up playing euchre with my dad and granddad. Those two knew their stuff and taught me well. At staff Christmas party last year, I was standing by the cards table. I worked for a company that was very much an old boys club. I was the only staff member present who had been there less than 15 years and was a young female, so you can imagine what they thought of me. I was asked to sit in and hold a spot while one of the guys went to go get drinks. I was partnered up with a logistics manager and was playing the CEO and engineering manager. I ended up winning two rounds single-handedly and therefore the game. The CEO chewed out the engineering manager for his shoddy decision-making and stormed off. Oops. Owner of the restaurant I work at brings in this gimmicky, as-seen-on-TV vegetable dicer, the kind where you still have to use a knife to get the food small enough to dice. I laughed at him as he tried to tell me how much time it's going to save us in the kitchen. He challenges me. Three onions, small dice, winner gets a case of beer. I've been cooking professionally for close to two decades, so long story short, that was some good beer. I was a competitive swimmer when I was in grade school. Once, when I was probably 10 or so, I was at a swim meet out of town and was doing some recreational swimming in the hotel pool. There were other children and people swimming around, and I noticed this full-grown man who was challenging some of the kids to races. Obviously, he was beating all of these 8-year-olds, some who were still wearing floaties. I swam over and challenged him to a race. We agreed on the terms to the other side of the pool and back and started off. I immediately pulled past him and sprinted across the pool and back. After I reached the other side before he had barely started, he just stopped in the middle of the pool and seemed pretty butthurt that he had just been destroyed in a race by a ten-year-old girl. I was kind of upset that he didn't even try to finish the race once he knew he had lost. Not quite the same, but a similar vein. A few years ago, I was just starting to get into paintball. I go to my local field with my stepdad, brothers, and a couple friends. Once we're all set up, some kid, like 12 years old, comes up to us. He says his team isn't there yet. He's early and he's bored. So he challenges the six of us to match. We figure odds are in our favor, 6v1 elimination. So we go up against him and this little effort just floors us. I almost got him but missed my shot and my crappy hopper jammed up. Good times. As a female, all of the times I've had a mechanic try to screw me over thinking I didn't know crap about cars. Thankfully, my dad has taught me a thing or two. Happened to my rowing coach. She was on a rowing machine in the gym and some guy came up to her saying she was doing it wrong. She pretended to ask for help with technique. Well, you see, you're using too much back. You have to keep your back up straight the whole time and not just swing at the hips at all. Oh, like this? Rows without back swing, also called under the chest. 
No, no, legs and arms are different exercise. You got to do those separately. Oh, okay, well, thanks. I guess my coach told me wrong. Oh, what sport do you play? I'm an Olympic rower. I'm only in New Jersey to train for Beijing. He walked away silently. Not an expert, but I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. So when my friend arranged one side of it and was boasting about it, well, it was priceless watching him when I solved it in under a minute. So I ski a little bit. Well, a lot, since I was two and I'm currently 16. Also, I raced competitively and went to state and went all conference my freshman and sophomore year, currently a sophomore. In my free time, I ski terrain park, so I'm fairly good at both. Some kid at school challenged me to a race on a school ski trip. He was cocky and nobody liked him. He skied a few years himself. And I slaughtered him. Also, I gave him a head start and wiped the floor with him. Then he raced me on a course. I beat him by a few seconds each time, which is a lot of time in racing. Then he challenged me to a terrain park competition. He gave up after I did a 450 out of the first rail. One and a quarter spin coming out of the rail. Mind you, this was all on my park skis, which are not my race skis. Skiing isn't very big at my school. Well, one time a guy found out I'd won multiple TKD tournaments and wanted to challenge me to a boxing match, saying TKD didn't help you with real fighting. Because, you know, boxing is so much more realistic. So we boxed, and he left the gym with cuts on both lips and lots of red marks on his face. I wasn't even going very hard. Just because someone doesn't TKD doesn't mean their hands are useless, just means the kicks are awesome and fun. Whenever somebody starts bragging about their car audio system, everybody seems to think their system is way louder and has the capability to break glass. Fact is, my love for setting up car audio led me to pursue an electrical engineering degree. Everybody thinks their system is awesome until they hear my perfectly tuned sub box that doesn't overpower the mids and highs, nor drops the voltage. Dance, dance, revolution. I'm a big guy, not obese, but I shouldn't slid on flimsy furniture. So I've been playing DDR since I was a kid, even had the nice thick dance pads to play on. Some guy was trying to show off to a bunch of girls at an arcade. When he finished, I walked up to the machine and he made some offhand comment that I could have a heart attack. So I threw it on doubles in heavy mode. That shut him up. I'm really, really good at ping pong. I can't count how often I've gone to a buddy's place and had people challenge me. I tell them outright to that I'll likely annihilate them. They take it as a challenge. I proceed to F their crap up. Once, I bested 36 games in a row, apparently. I was really drunk, so this was all learned from friends. The twist? I only play defense. This drives people mad as they just spike and spike and spike easy lobs, and I return them with a slow spin. Several guys have tried to fight me. It does get really interesting for the whole party when there's another good ping pong player and crap goes down. I was at the gym at work and there's a fit looking older guy running on the treadmill. There's also another guy there wandering around, not really working out, but trying to talk to everyone and offer advice. What is it with guys thinking girls need help in the gym? <laughs> Just being a pest in general. He wanders over to the guy running and starts asking him what he's training for. Running guy answers, ultra marathon in a few weeks. Annoying guy is impressed, but jokingly, and says, will you win? RG, probably. AG, oh, <laughs> yeah, you've always got to be positive, right? RG, well, I've won it for the last three years, and the closest person to me was 50 minutes behind me, so yeah, I'm pretty positive. I surreptitiously check out his name on the sign-in register and went back to my desk to Google him. Yep, multiple records for ultramarathons, 24-hour road and treadmill races, 48-hour treadmill races. I get challenged on an almost weekly basis. I'm a petroleum geologist. I frack, you might say. And I routinely meet people who are talking about a subject they know absolutely nothing about. My buddy and I were at a crap bar in the Bronx just playing pool. Two guys, extremely local looking, come over and challenge us to a game. We wiped the floor with them. They asked us for another with $20 on the line. We refused because they were terrible and knew they were trying to hustle us. You think you're good at wasting someone's time, but I am the expert. Just the other day, one of my classmates invited me over for a night of drinking and Smash Bros. I ended up beating him and his friend two-on-one with every character. He says he's not having me over for drinks and Smash Bros anymore. When I was at uni, a friend of one of my housemates was doing a PhD in Irish studies. Now, I'm Irish, born there, lived in England most of my life, and don't have an accent, so most people just assume I'm English, or that because I've lived in the UK so long that I don't know much about Irish history. 
This guy decided to try and teach me about the Easter Rising of 1916 and tell me that the flag that was raised wasn't the same one as we now know as the Republic of Ireland flag. It was a different one. To which I replied, I know, my great uncle was the one who hoisted it. We've got the signed military records from that day at my parents' house. School. Shooting. I've been shooting most of my life starting when I joined Cub Scouts and working on it until I hit Eagle, getting all of the merit badges and winning awards while I was at it. My mom's family is from a tiny bum F town in northeastern Minnesota. It's a town full of northern rednecks. You know the kind. Trucks and camo Carhartt jackets. I am from the south, but live in a city. Anyway, we were up there visiting and they asked if I wanted to go shooting, and I did. When I got there, they were cracking jokes and giving me the crappy guns. Something a city boy like me could handle. We did target shooting in Skeet, and I crushed them wearing nothing but, according to them, FEJ Crew clothes. They didn't talk much crap after that. I have a friend who always finds wacky physics theories on the internet and tries to convince me that they are correct. He left school at 16, and although he is much smarter than you would expect for someone like that, he seems to be easily swayed by what he reads and doesn't know enough to disprove most of what he reads. I am studying physics at a decent university, not to sound like a bell end, but I know what I'm talking about when it comes to physics. We've had so many arguments where he has completely ignored fundamental parts of physics and claimed that my understanding is lacking. The amount of times I have said, I passed an exam on this last week slash month, and he claims his incomplete understanding of things is sometimes infuriating. I'm not the expert, my dad is. It bugs me that he's so chill that he never stands up and shows people he knows his business. He collects vinyl records, has thousands of them, and knows the value in crap. When he came to visit me, I'm living in another city, we went to some record stores and antiques fairs. He had a lot of opportunities to show himself but never did. Sellers rent like, this is the rarest one I've got. You're not going to find one of these ever. In the internet, they cost ten times more than what I'm asking. And he just thanked and leave the store and then tell me, I've got two already. Similar things happened all the time. He also knew when things were rare, but sellers didn't have a clue. For example, he found a record in an antique fair for five bucks whose value was over 500. Edit grammar. I used to play trumpet in a local symphony. I gave it up because people became too competitive and D's rather than just accepting the fact that we were making music. My friend was in the orchestra as well as a violin player. After I'd quit, I went to one of the concerts, and afterward I had no trouble getting backstage because I used to be tight with a security guard back when I played. So I met up with my friend and he asked what I thought about things and how they sounded. After I gave him my thoughts, he joked that they were missing a strong trumpet part. This launched me into a little critique of the brass section. Just then, this girl, must have been fairly new because I have no idea who she was, walks up to me and says, very bee-like, I overheard what you're saying. Who in the hell do you think you are to criticize our music like that? I simply said, honey, I was the principal trumpet player for five years. She then tried to make up for her rudeness and ask why I no longer played. I smiled and said, because of people like you. Props to every expert here whose field isn't video games. I'm crap at everything. Not an expert, but I was invited to a Christmas party last year. They had a dessert competition. Not very many people knew I'm going to college for culinary arts. Won unanimously. He told me that he wanted a rematch next Christmas. I'm taking my baking class this semester. Good luck, mister. Just the other day on Reddit, I commented that a photo of a church in mountains in Italy must be way north in Italy because it looked more Swiss slash Austrian. I was referring to the style of church, which had a bulb-type dome on the steeple, which is very Tyrolean. But I didn't specify. Someone commented, Ha ha ha, ask me how I know you've never been to Italy. There are lots of mountains like that. And I replied that I've been to Milan, Padua, Venice, Pissarro, Urbino, Florence, Siena, Assisi... Orvieto, and Rome studying art and architecture, and that I was referring to the architecture. I was by no means an expert, but I was the best at Mario Kart of my friends, and I had the new kid in town over at my house with another friend, and he asked if we could play Mario Kart. I only had two working controllers, so we took turns. I can't remember the order, so I won't go over that, but it was me and the new kid, and the effer destroyed me. Like, not beat me a little. He was so far ahead of me, it was insane. He even used that drift hopping thing you see really good people use, and he used all the shortcuts and everything. It was crazy. Luckily, he was nice enough to explain it to us instead of just showing off and keeping it a secret like so many kids do. It was really cool, but his dad was in the military, so the next year or so, and he was gone. Okay. 
There I was, a 14-year-old girl, autistic, cripplingly shy, I was known as the silent one. I'd known this group of people for three years, but I had never said more than two words to any of them, mostly guys. They would always get in stupid contests to prove their macho-ness, i.e. who can eat the hottest pepper, eat a grand slam from Denny's the fastest, etc. This time it was who can chug a bottle of water the fastest. I have this weird ability to insta-drink a water bottle by crushing it flat and basically inhaling it. Without saying a word, I grab a bottle of water and sit at the table with them. They were a bit weirded out, but they went with it. Everyone chugs, and by the time any of them drank an inch of water, I was done. Most of them just stopped and stared with their mouths open in a mixture of awe and revulsion. It was glorious. My friend was drunk and challenged me to a slap bet chess match. The next day, when we were sober, he has a video of his face getting slapped. Wasn't an expert at chess, but way better than my friend. As a teenager, I was pretty good at arm wrestling, so that relatively big and older guy challenged me on that one party. I think it was in a bench press team. I effing destroyed him. His friends were laughing their butts off. For me, it was the other way around. In middle school and high school, I knew a friend of a friend who really loved Call of Duty. One day at a party, a few of us happened to be playing COD. After watching him play a bit, I go, Okay, I bet it can take you. Long story short, the guy destroys me, and all I could say was, Oh yeah, I guess you're pretty good. That guy was actually Damon Karma Barlow. He is currently a pro COD player and arguably one of the best in the world. TLDR, I challenged one of the world's best COD players to a game expecting to win. I no longer play FPS games. I was at the fair with a girl, first date. We walked past a clown sitting on one of those dunk tank things. He was trash talking everyone that was walking by, made fun of my jeans and her boots. Little did he know I was a little league pitcher. <laughs> Paid the money and got three balls. Threw the first one and missed, a little too low. Gave the second ball to my date to have a go, she missed two. Last ball, threw it hard and nailed the target. Watched him go completely silent as he hung suspended for half a second before going into the water was priceless. To make it worse for him, the fair was just about to close, so it was a cool fall night. Not the best time for a dip. He didn't have anything to say after that. Ended up making out with my date, so yeah, I think she was impressed too. Camping in line overnight for episode 1 tickets back in college. Start playing a game of Trivial Pursuit with the people next to me. Not as fun as watching a Matrix VCD on a portable TV others in line had brought out, but still pretty fun. Anyway, I get to the final phase of the game where you have all six pie pieces, but you still have to go to the center and answer one question based on the color of their choice. When I get to the center, they choose sports. I mean, we're a bunch of engineering school students in line at midnight for a Star Wars movie. Safe bet, right? Well, I'm no expert or anything, but I know my sports trivia. Dead simple question. Game over. Easiest Trivial Pursuit win in my life. Turns out all it was good for was a story that no one will read on Reddit 16 years later, but I'm okay with that. Oh, and I didn't even get tickets to the midnight showing. Got stuck with a 3 a.m. ticket instead. Stupid college towns with only one screen showing it, even if it was a 900-person theater. My ex once mentioned in passing that he knows French. I didn't even have to be an expert. BF. Hey, I know French. Me. Do you really? BF. Yes, I know it so well. Me. Your test starts now. BF. What? Me. Aujourd'hui, on parle seulement en français. BF. Bonjour? Me. LIAR! I work in maintenance, and when the operator slash supervisor lets me know a machine is down, they try to guess or tell me the cause all the time. One guy's been at this company working around a machine for around 20 years. He has never even been close to the correct cause of an issue. His suggestions would be like saying, My tire is flat. I must need an oil change. At the county fair, I was on the receiving end of some ill-natured heckling from a couple of farmhands. Really good old boy types. They were being D-heads to everybody who signed up for the Skid Loader Rodeo. Smack talking anybody with how crap hot they are and how anybody else is just embarrassing themselves. For whatever reason, they especially targeted me with their lame sauce rural Iowa smack talk. It got to the point where the one got on my face. To make a boring story short, I manage an agricultural business. All I do at said business is operate a Skid Street tractor. I won 10 bucks and made a pair of brothers eat crow. Sort of. I had a wheel break off my Honda Pilot SUV. Honda USA told me over the phone that the wheel is held on by a part that was designed to wear out under normal operating conditions. They claimed that this wasn't a manufacturing defect. 
I'm a mechanical engineer. I know that wheels aren't designed to break off cars. So I made model wooden swords a while ago, and one day my friend and I were in the garage, no idea why, and he challenged me to a sword fight. Now, no one knew, but at the time I'd been doing fencing for a few months. So considering I'm kind of scrawny and all, he was surprised when I blocked every single one of his attacks and won five times in a row. Somebody challenged me to play a round of Age of Empires 2, medieval strategy computer game, against him. I used to play that game on a competitive level. So I just proceeded to play at roughly the same snail's pace speed he did. Sometimes attack him with a weak armies to make it look like I'm struggling to beat him, while in reality 90% of my troops were tucked away hidden in the back of my lands. It was closed off arena map that made it really easy to hide them from him. So I continue to act like I'm struggling and slowly start to give in to his siege attacks, making it look like he's actually going to win the game. At one point he asks in a victoriously smug voice, So, looks like the game is over, right? To which I reply, Looks like it. And before he could say anything else, roughly a hundred fully upgraded elite Teutonic Knights emerge from my side of the fog of war and proceed to annihilate everything in their path. His reaction was priceless. It went from complete disbelief, where are all those units from, to denial, you cheating butthat, and various other emotions, while I just had a hearty laugh. Please leave your story in the comments, I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.